Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick update video on Dogecoin. I know it's been a while since we talked about it on the channel. Um, but I think there are some relevant points that are going on right now for Dogecoin uh, that I think could be putting it in a more bullish territory uh, in the near future, next few months. I think alts in, in general are still very bullish. Um, I think they're in somewhat of an accumulation phase at the moment. And so, yeah, I just wanted to cover a few of these things. So the first thing I wanted to cover is, and it's going to be mostly price analysis that we're doing. We'll, we will do a little bit of volume analysis, um, but mostly price analysis. So we have this trend line um, that starts in, let's see, March of 2017. You can see we have a rejection point, a couple rejection points actually, in December of 2018, as well as April of 2019. Um, and then it was found to support, and this is what actually substantiates the trend line. Um, these two touch points are the are the most defining. Uh, in March or February of 2021, you have a few touch points here in April of 2021. And now here, um, the recent crypto dump a few weeks ago where um, on December 4th, uh, in the middle of the night, I remember it was like a Friday or Saturday, you had that big drop off in Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin went all the way down to like 39, 40,000 on some exchanges. Um, so you have that touch point. And you can see here that, I mean, this trend line, and we've talked about on the channel before, that it's not about um, trend lines being like so exactly drawn. It's just a generalized trend, right? So imagine it more of a rectangle rather than a line. Lines are uh, accurate, but it's more of a uh, general support region right like a general region that drives price up or down um so yeah so this trend line is pretty interesting but i wouldn't just trade something based off of this trend line um i have more that's making this an interesting uh interesting opportunity and i don't talk about emas too too much on the channel but um, we are running into a key region for some higher end EMAs. Now, these EMAs are Fibonacci EMAs. Um, the 377 in green and the 610 in red. And you can see that uh, right now Doge is trading right in between these exponential moving averages. Um, if you're not familiar with, and these are daily, this is a daily chart, okay? So. If you're not familiar with EMAs, basically it's an exponential move in average of the price over the course of whatever time frame you're using. So on, on this one, the green is 377 days and the red is 610 days. Uh, and again, I chose those numbers because they're uh, high Fibonacci numbers. And you can see here that um, the red 610 EMA, it, it was a perfect bounce here on December 13th from $15.22. Um, and yeah, I mean, it appears like this is creating somewhat of an accumulation range. You can see pretty good rejection happening here at the 377 EMA. And you could see it was acting as support here previously. Um, so this is a pretty key region. And if you do some shorter term ones, like the 21 and the 55, let's get them up here. So the blue is 21 and the uh, yellow is 55. You can see we're actually sandwiched right in between the 21 um, and the 377 EMAs. Um, and then you're going to be looking for the 21 to cross back above that. That's going to be a more bullish move. And then you're going to want to see it act as support for the price uh, on the way up there. I mean, obviously, you can break below for a little while. But generally speaking, you want the price to be ahead of the moving average in order to be establishing more of a bull trend. Um, and I'm not saying that this is going to blow up tomorrow. I'm just pointing out some of the opportunities that I see uh, coming with Doge. So, so far, um, what we talked about is this potential trend support that we're going to have here that dates back to, I think it was 2017. Let's see. Yeah, 2017, March of 2017. Um, and then we have these EMAs kind of, uh, these really, like, these are long-standing EMAs. I mean, this is a... The last time that Doge was trading within these high EMAs at 377 and the 610 and actually like touching them with price was in November of 2020. So, I mean, you can tell that this is, you know, it's been a long time since Doge was in this kind of over potentially oversold territory. Um, 
Aside from that, you also have uh, Fibonacci retracement that you want to point out. Um, actually, let me just leave the EMAs up, and you can, well, maybe we'll add the EMAs after. Um, so keep those EMAs in mind. And there's a few different ways that you can draw this Fib retracement. You can draw from the absolute bottom before this cycle. Um, and if you draw it this way, you see that this bounce, again, was perfectly off of the 618, which is the top of your golden pocket. This is going to be your most common Fibonacci retracement level. And this is with Fib on log scale. Uh, I can show you without log scale as well. But my chart is in log scale, so... Um, both actually work. They're both pretty consistent um, and will show you pretty key levels. And you can see here that we're actually, we bounced off of almost the 885 Fibonacci uh, without log scale and we're testing the 786 right now, the bottom of the 786. Um, typically when you see trading below the 786, that's going to be, especially on like a more macro move like this, this is going to be a key area for, for price to establish. And once price establishes above here, um, it can be a good signal of reversal. 786 is usually a very, uh, you know, you've, you've experienced a lot of selling by the time that you're trading at the 786, based on my experience. Um, a lot of relative selling, I should say. You can pull from the bottom here, and this is back on log scale. You can see here that it extended a little bit below the golden pocket before reversing and now retesting the 0.5. And then you can start from this key handle here that was like your jump off point uh, for this big run up. You can see here you slipped just below the 707, eventually found the golden pocket of support, and now are heading towards the 0.5. And then this one, so we'll zoom in on these candles just so you see exactly what my logic is here. So you had... A push up here, a rejection down, and then another push up. If you start here with this, the bottom of this uh, candle, which really was like the ultimate daily rally, like where the price just never turned around again, you can see that this accumulation that's occurring here, potential accumulation, I should say, is occurring right in the golden pocket. And we just broke right back out of it. Um, so that's, I mean, you know, overall, this is basically... Bulls are gaining support at these levels, right? This is almost creating a uh, a double bottom as well. If you look here, you have, well, you know, you have a bunch of retesting happening of this region, right? You got, bears got rejected here, got, price got sent back up, and then back down here, boom, bears finally think that they're breaking this, boom, you trade right back into that range. So, um, clearly Fibonacci is playing a big role here. Uh, you know, these levels are, you know, institutions use these Fibonacci, Fibonacci not Fibonacci, uh, levels, uh, for their trading. I mean, their algorithms definitely consider Fibonacci. So let's pull that again and then put that with the EMAs just so you can see that for comparison's sake. So boom, you can see here. You know, you're hanging above uh, this, the red, which is the 610-day moving average, exponential moving average, is actually sitting just below the bottom of that golden pocket. And you can see this trend support as well, right? These are all converging. So these are a lot of reasons for price to be turning around here in the near term, um, relative near term, I should say, right? The next few weeks to months, um, nothing too crazy. Like, I'm not saying it's going to blow up tomorrow, like I said earlier in the video, but... I just see a lot of reversal signals here. Um, so overall, I'm pretty excited about that. Let's go to Binance so that we can get some more um, more data on the recent volume. So just because Binance is a more heavily traded platform, it can be a little bit more reliable for your volume. Um, so we can look at VPVR first and foremost. We'll look at the recent trading range. All right, let me let me see accurate here. Uh, you can see here that uh, in the recent trading range, this block that we're in, and again, this goes back to the point that you know we're not necessarily completely out of the woods yet. But this block here, down to let's just say fourteen dollars. I mean, fourteen point four cents, basically, uh, extending from like sixteen and a half cents. Um, this is the most lightly traded block in this recent accumulation range. Um, so it was natural for price to work its way down here so that you could build up, build up this VPVR. And you can see that you're still building up the VPVR here. And basically, if you're not familiar with VPVR, it's 
uh, range-based trading. So um, it just counts volume in a vertical sense like this based on the price that's most traded at. And it could be a good, um, good way to tell where institutions are going to be looking for liquidity at. So a lot of times, um, if something hasn't traded in a certain range before, um, they see it as an opportunity to go down and test these regions for retail and make sure that retail has interest at these lower prices. Um, or more likely they would want to shake retail out of their positions at these lower prices because retail hasn't seen these prices yet. So they know that it's going to be a little bit easier to trick retail out of their positions. Um, and then we can look at the regular volume as well as well. So you can see that, like we've talked about on the channel before, when you see these big price, these big spikes in volume, they're starting to trend more and more green. And you can see this, I mean, this candle in particular um, was 17 billion volume on October 28th. Uh, this is actually uh, when I, I think I originally covered Doge somewhere in that region. Um, and then OBV, finally, uh, for the final thing that we're going to, analyze for the volume and i think price we're going to be done after this obv is in a general uptrend uh which if you're not familiar with obv it's basically just uh it counts volume on balance volume so the logic behind the indicator is whenever you have a green candle whatever volume is included in that candle is added to the obv and if you have a red candle whatever volume is in that candle is subtracted from the obv and the idea is that over the course of time you'll get a running balance of how much volume uh is is on it so it can give you an indication of institutions potentially uh accumulating if you have some sort of divergence uh at least that's the idea behind the indicator it makes sense to me you can see here that while price has uh been relatively flat on the bottom you have this general uptrend at uh to the upside from the bottom on the obv which is indicative of accumulation um as well you have from here to this top or even even this top you have a slight uptrend um while price is in this relatively aggressive downtrend right uh so that divergence is, you know, is something to to pay attention to because it could be a signal that um, even though smart money is driving the price down, they're actually buying at these lower levels as retail gets shaken out of their positions. And you have somewhat of potentially an ascending triangle occurring here um, on OBV. And normally when you have a breakout in OBV, like you break this sort of pattern, uh, price is going to follow OBV. So it's not the best, like... Uh, it's more of a like a leading indicator is how it's mostly used. So when you see OBV go up a ton relative to price, it can be a signal that you're going to see price follow. Um, that's normally how it's used. So those are the things that I was checking out. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like. Uh, tell me what you're thinking in the comments down below. Tell me what your thoughts are if you're holding Doge still. The other thing that I really like about Doge is that it's almost like the forgotten crypto. Like I know at least in like the Twitter retail kind of community, um, it's not very it's not talked about very often, even though it has a very big brand, right? Like people are very familiar with Dogecoin. People know Dogecoin. And it has Elon who at any given moment will, you know, put something out. I I mean, like you saw his tweet with the Floki on Christmas or whatever. The dog's like wearing a, a Dogecoin branded metal, you know? And and the last thing that we heard about Dogecoin, like with Elon, was that he was gonna go be he's gonna go work with the developers um for Dogecoin and stuff like that. That was all the way back in May before it before it uh kind of jumped off of a cliff, right? So to me, you know, all of these things um combined, like make me bullish now does that mean that i'm going all in no i'm not going all in but you know i know everybody knows what dogecoin can do and i mean just to just to show you you know you it does have this cyclical sort of nature to it right like you can easily see that it does similar things in price right so to me and i, I know that this isn't like the most predictive thing because we've talked about this with amc before we've talked about this with a few different assets before um cycles aren't perfect predictors but 
you know, it is still something to definitely be paying attention to because clearly there's something going on here, right? Like, I don't know. For me, I just find it hard to to believe that um, whatever is causing this sort of similar price action, like maybe you would say that this... You, I mean, you can just see the similarities um, in the price action. It's really odd, actually. I mean, maybe you'd say, like, this and this are the same. And, like, before we thought we were further ahead in this in this doge cycle, but maybe this is where we are now, right? Maybe we're currently in this part, I would say maybe, like, here. So maybe there's a ways to go for doge. But... You know, with all of these these factors lining up, like for me, I I just think that um, knowing what Doge can do, right? Like for me personally, I just think that it's a good move for me to kind of get myself a position and kind of wait it out and see what happens. Now, if it breaks to the downside, right? Like so, and you can clearly see here that this is a descending triangle, like no doubt, right? Um, that I drew up here, which is a bearish pattern. Okay. If we see price break below, and, and I mean, I'm sure this is a fib, a fib level. Yeah, so if we see price, and let me change the color of this so it's a little bit easier to see. See how it correlates? So it's a little bit above the golden pocket and below the 0.5 if you draw the fib this way. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it actually is the golden pocket. This is probably the most significant. Uh, <laughs> this is definitely the line you want to be paying attention to, I think. Um, let's see. Let me make it nice and perfect here. Oh, You know, you, I mean, you don't really even need the red line, do you? Because um, you just have these bounces. So if you break below this golden pocket and you start to you start to trade below here for a long time, Right, you're spending a lot of time down here, um, and you're getting beat down by EMAs, and and the selling volume is is uh relatively strong compared to the buying volume. Then yeah, I mean I'd start to change change my mind on it. But as of right now, as long as you have this bounce, I mean, for me, I can see the price, uh, maybe carrying itself up here, and then maybe fighting, getting fought back down, retesting here before here, or even you could. Uh, break below like almost like a spring phase right before you have your eventual move up um you just don't want to spend too much time down down below these levels because then what, what starts to happen is the bear trend starts to seem like it's winning right um but i think that with those those longer term emas um, price kind of beaten down here. We're in these key Fibonacci uh, retracement levels. I, I just think that, you know, the chances of reversal and the upside potential for me, like the risk to reward um, is is good for me uh, at this point for Dogecoin. So um, that was a really long-winded video, I think. Uh, but I covered a lot of things, a lot of potential things that I'm looking at with Dogecoin. Uh so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you gained something from it. If you did, again, make sure you drop a like, comment down below. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Um, and yeah, until next time. Uh, I'm going to be making an AMC video here shortly. So uh, make sure you stay tuned for that. All right.